Hi guys, I'm Sonal and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about myself and also talk about three of my best recommendations if you want to get healthier and if you want to lose weight. So I've been a diabetic for the past 25 or more years and um, in all those years I have been researching about diets, about health and how to get healthier, how to lose weight and that's what I'm going to share with you. So I'm not a nutritionist or an expert or somebody who has a degree in any of this. So this is something I'm sharing from my personal experience. So let's start off with the first point. Uh, definitely, if you want to lose weight and get healthier, low carb is the best approach. What I have seen so far, that's something which is more sustainable than most of the other diets because it's satiating. You're eating higher protein and fats and which is what fills you up and it will help you in staying away from other foods. Now, why does low carb work? Low carb works because whenever you eat carbs, it will increase the hormone called insulin in your blood because that's the hormone that is required for digesting or actually using the carbs up. I'm going to talk in the simplest possible way. Now, the problem with insulin is it's great if it works efficiently, but with a lot of people with diabetes and metabolic syndrome, you are resistant to insulin so whatever insulin you use you're not using it that efficiently and what actually happens is that insulin has another role and that role is to store the rest of the carbohydrates or the sugars that you're not using it stores it as fat so you just keep on increasing your fat stores if you keep eating sugars and carbs once you lower your sugar and carb intake, your insulin goes down. And if your insulin goes down, you're obviously not storing as much carbs and you start using fats for fuel. Most of us have some fat on us and there is a reason for that. Your body has stored it so that you use it when you don't have food coming in or carbs coming in. But we on a daily basis don't let our body get into that state at all. No matter how fat we are, we're always thinking about uh, eating food to nourish our body. But we got to think that we are probably overnourished. So, uh, you know, cutting down on the carbs really helps. And this point is going to also carry over into the second point. But let me just cover keto before that. So low carb diet is anywhere from 100 grams of carbs per day or lower and keto is 20 grams or lower. But you don't want to cut down on your carbs and actually use them to eat grains. So keto is an approach where you're cutting down on your grains, beans, lentils, uh, fruits, anything that has carbs and you're using your carbs through your vegetables. So the most nutrient dense. So, you know, for the quantity of calories or carbs that are in the vegetables, you get the most nutrition. So most bang for your buck. So what you want to do is the 20 grams of carbs that you're eating, if you're eating keto, you want to use them for vegetables. If you're eating 100 grams, which is a low carb diet, you still want to use it for vegetables and some fruits like berries and low glycemic fruits like apple. So that way you don't really cut down on the nutrition. The only thing you're cutting down is on empty carbs or sugars. Okay, so let's go to the second point. The second point is intermittent fasting. I think most people these days have heard about intermittent fasting and what it is. So you want to give your body rest or your digestive system some rest. What happens is if you keep eating all the time, as I said in the first point, you will be making more and more insulin in your body and that insulin is going to constantly keep converting your carbs into glycogen and fats. So you don't want to do that. You want to give your body a break. Limit your meals to certain times. And I have found that in my case, the ideal way is to fast until 1 p.m. So, you know, in the mornings, most diabetics, since we take our blood sugars, we are aware that our blood sugars are high in the morning. So there is no dearth of sugar for us. We do not need any energy that our liver is secreting. So it's the best time to actually cut down on the food intake. So just fast until 1 p.m. And then I have my first meal, which is lunch. And if you guys love eggs, because there are a lot of us who love breakfast, and we don't want to skip the food that we have in breakfast. So what I do is I have my eggs, I have my meat, my vegetables, everything that I love in my lunch. So that's my largest meal. And then sometimes I just skip dinner. 
there are times when I get tempted because I make something good for dinner and I want to eat it with my family or we'll end up going out or ordering food from out. And those days then I will have some light dinner. I do not take any vegetables at that meal. I just take some protein, whatever I like. And um, you know those are the two meals sometimes after dinner if I'm craving something sweet I just make a cold coffee using heavy cream uh, or coconut milk and I also put some cocoa powder in that or cacao powder and that's kind of like a treat or a dessert for me and there are times when I make a dessert video and I have that uh, for dinner but that's my second point intermittent fasting will help you immensely these are two standalone approaches if you're eating low carb you will lose weight and if you're doing intermittent fasting too you will lose weight so there are people who are not able to follow a low carb diet so what they do is they just do intermittent fasting so they eat for maybe like eight hour window or a six hour window or even a nine hour window and they fast the rest of the day and just doing that on a daily basis they lose loads of weight and get healthier there are many other benefits of fasting uh, which would be a longer video and i don't want to cover it in this but you cannot believe how good it is for you and how how good it makes you feel you feel active alive so right now i'm fasting and you will see that um, you know when you're fasting you're much more sharp your brain works better you're more focused and you can achieve a lot more tasks so fasting in the morning and getting a lot of your work done in that time is the best way because after i have my lunch i kind of feel sluggish i feel slowed down and that's not one of my most effective times so that is that okay so what i was saying is that if you can't do low carb you can do intermittent fasting so so in your eating window you can definitely eat carbs or whatever you like i mean there are people who believe that they can even eat dessert and um, you know get healthier on intermittent fasting which is true but it's something like i mean i consider dessert or sugar um you know close to what poison is so even if you uh, could eat poison and still get slightly healthier you wouldn't it's not a literal comparison but it's something like that it's damaging your body no matter what you know you could get much healthier if you cut that down so that's uh, you know a no brainer for me that's something i won't even mention that you need to do you have to cut down on sugar if you can't do intermittent fasting just doing low carb you can lose weight you can get healthier because insulin not only has an effect on fat storage but it also makes you inflamed and it can increase your cholesterol and it gives you arthritis it can give you a lot of skin problems and also grains and beans and lentils are believed to be linked with some of these problems so a lot of us are allergic to these things or not digesting them as well as we should so cutting them down definitely helps you to gain other health benefits too my last suggestion is exercise now that's again something everybody has heard and i am somebody who hates to exercise and i hate to accept it on camera but that's something i just do not do but lately i have been very convinced especially with you know your growing age as you see some degeneration in you which keto and intermittent fasting will definitely help you slow but still there is some degeneration some aging happening in you and uh, the most important thing that can keep you feeling and looking healthy is muscles so if you have strong and good muscles it's going to increase your stamina it's going to keep you on your feet and keep you feeling younger so you know you could be healthy like you could have no diseases you could have a great body weight you know you could have the best numbers when you take a blood report but what if you're not fit if your muscle mass is low or if you don't have enough muscle you won't feel like getting up in the morning and doing anything you'll be more sluggish you'll be sitting in one place i mean of course this is not um, an isolated thing uh, you need to be overall healthy too to move around but just by being healthy you're not going to be able to move around so if you want to go trekking you want to do things that youngsters do or you did in your young age you need to continue to have muscles so if you observe all the celebrities and the film stars or people who keep themselves healthy have good muscle tone the other reason is the more muscle you have your bmr or your metabolism is higher muscle burns sugar so even when you're sitting or doing no activity muscle will burn more 
energy than if you had more fat and less muscle so there are like you know in numerous reasons to get yourself to exercising and strength training is one of the most important ones which a lot of women avoid because they think that they will bulk up which isn't possible for women because you don't have the hormones or the body composition to have bulky muscles but you still need to form yourself up Another thing that I want to point out here is that exercising is not really going to help you lose fat. If you want to lose fat, you want to change your diet, you want to zip up your mouth whenever there's food in front of you, you want to just say no. That's what is going to help you the most. But you need to take these two approaches together. You want to have a healthy diet as well as an exercise routine because the, the diet is going to help you get rid of the extra fat and the exercise is going to help you build muscles so once you get rid of the extra fat your muscles will be visible so even if you do one of the two you are not going to look as great as you might feel so exercising is definitely going to help you feel healthier and fitter but the third part is the physique so you're healthy and fit now but you want to look good so to look good, you want your muscles to be seen, you want that body tone to be seen and for that you need to lose the fat and increase your muscle. And to increase your muscle, you need to do strength training. To help with your diabetes too, strength training is very very important. Like I said, muscle will burn sugar. The other thing is you need to have some kind of aerobic activity too. So during the week, you want to kind of break your exercise routine in strength training, aerobics and flexibility. So aerobic activity will help you burn the sugar at that very point. So if you do it on a daily basis to a certain extent, it will burn your sugar at that time and give you better readings. The other thing is it helps with heart health and lung health because your breathing capacity increases, your heart can sort of sustain you for a longer time. So those things happen with aerobic activity and of course you need flexibility. So yoga is a great exercise for flexibility because it will keep your joints flexible. You will be able to stand straight, work better, move better. All your joints will be lubricated. Your range of movement is increased. Uh, so all these three are important. I would say that you should do a little bit of all three of them every day or keep days for each of these. So two days of strength training and two days of aerobics and two days of yoga or something like that. And one or two days of break also helps. Uh, what I am personally doing is I've just started exercising a little bit and taking it slow because sometimes, you know, overdoing it completely throws me off and I feel like that's something I cannot do. So for that reason, um, I have started with some strength training, little bit of moving around and yoga uh, each day. And I don't hold myself accountable as much because uh, the way I am uh, in my personality, if I start doing this accountability thing, I start feeling guilty and then I want to just get rid of the guilt by not doing it at all so you want to find uh, your mentality you want to find what works for you there are certain ways that work for each of us and if you just calm down and go and peep into your own personality you will know what works for you best so let me know what you think about this video let me know what you thought about these three points this is a generic video so i'm not um, saying that if you're a diabetic you need to do that or if, you, or if you're keto you need to do that this is something that should work for anybody who wants to get healthy. Of course, don't take any drastic measures without asking your doctor. So if you are on medication for sugar or anything else, you cannot cut down on your carbs immediately. You need to cut down on your medication as well as carbs as also if you're on insulin. So I hope if you're a diabetic, you're aware of that. If you're not, work with your doctor towards a healthier lifestyle. But these are some points that I think you guys should know and I really wanted to share with you. Um, I hope they have helped. What do you think? And let me know if you follow any of these. Uh, do you follow keto? Do you follow low carb? Um, do you follow intermittent fasting? Have you lost any weight doing these? Do you exercise daily? How much? Uh, do you have any tips? Because this really helps everybody. I don't know if I reach a lot of people, but it will at least help me if you share your tips with me. Also, if you think this was a useful video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more videos like that or more keto recipe videos, which is what I do on a regular basis. And um, also click the notification bell on all notifications to be notified every time that I add a new recipe. And thanks for watching. Bye.